It's so mind-blowing what the body is capable of, but even still, it's so outside of the realm of our current scientific knowledge that I typically try to encourage people to fast just to see what you're going to experience. Hi, I'm Chris James, you're watching The Healthy Alternative, and today we're gonna to be talking about how dry fasting doesn't actually dehydrate you. I know dry fasting is a newer topic for our channel, so I'm still getting these questions about how you know dry fasting hydrates you, or Chris, you're saying that you need to hydrate really well before you dry fast, but then you're gonna dry fast, it's gonna dry you out. And so I wanted to kind of address this a little bit today um, and use some examples from nature because Nature is one of the greatest teachers that I have personally found. It's usually unadulterated, especially if you go into like, you know, uh, jungle and, and different, different areas where human beings don't really have a large presence and you observe nature, you can learn a tremendous amount. Now, remember, whatever your belief system is, whether you believe in the Big Bang, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in uh, Buddha, whatever, whatever your belief system is, it created everything, right? So when you look at nature and you look at the animals and what they're able to achieve, it tells us a lot. So for example, when a camel is in the desert where it's hot and there's not a lot of different you know, resources for water and things of that nature, where do they get their water from? I think sometimes we live in these modern worlds where we have supermarkets and we have convenience stores everywhere and we think the rest of the world is like that and it's not. This is a very specific society that we live in not even not even just the society that we, we live in it's a very specific time in human history that we live in where we have all of these conveniences in the past we haven't had that and also in other places in the world we don't have that so how are creatures and, and humans able to survive what it breaks down is to like the intelligent design of the body so when fat is broken down it actually produces what's called metabolic water. And this is great because this is pure H2O, H2O3, cellular water, the fourth phase of water. This is the water that your cells actually use. So interestingly enough, for every gram of fat that is broken down, 1.1 grams of water is produced from that. So as you're losing weight, you're actually hydrating yourself, not just with any old kind of water, with the best kind of water. So when we talk about hydrating, we talk about you know drinking at least 90 ounces of water a day. We talk about eating you know hydrating foods. So these are like fruits, vegetables, pretty much plant, plant material. When I really think about it, dry fasting actually is gonna hydrate you better than some of these other things because you're talking about water that's already designed specifically by your system all right so it really doesn't get any better than that so as you enter deep ketosis the fat that most of us are looking to get rid of anyway or even just manage starts breaking down it oxidizes and then you produce water so that's one good reason why you don't have to worry about dehydrating yourself now obviously this is a process you're going to remember there's always that sine wave that's up and down so your body's going to do more work at certain times less work at certain times so it's not like you're going to be able to dry fast indefinitely right you're going to start to feel the effects of feeling dried out and things of that nature because remember dry fasting is not just about like producing internal water your body is here Healing. It's using those resources to do work. So as the body starts stripping away of the inflammation, it gets rid of the initial, you know, fat stores, and then it starts using those resources to start healing and detoxifying. You might find that you, you're not getting as much water production. So this isn't anything I would recommend to do indefinitely, right? Um, there are people out there that, you know, do the breatharian thing, and that's like a whole different practice. But I want to encourage you guys, you could try dry fasting for a day or two, maybe three days. You make sure you hydrate well going into it. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, not feeling dehydrated. Because what I've actually noticed is when I when I hydrate well going into my dry fast and then I start that process, you know, my mouth actually seems to feel like there's more moisture in it than than when I'm not dry fasting. That's what I found. That's what a lot of people have told me as well. So that's something you could actually look forward to. Now, it's important to understand that cellular energy production actually makes water. So inside your mitochondria, when you burn fat or glucose for energy, hydrogen from your food combines with oxygen from your breath. And this end product is metabolic water. So one of the things you could do during your dry fast to help to encourage water production is proper breathing. This is breathing techniques. 
um, being in an environment that's that has clean, fresh air. So being outside at the park or something like that can help you to actually produce more water, more efficiently, more cleanly, which is once again, when we talked about the breatharians, part of their practice is being outside in nature, um, um, as little clothes as is reasonable and doing very specific breathing techniques. This will help the body manufacture that metabolic water. So you could think of your cells as little manufacturing plants. While you're doing your dry fasting, the mitochondria is actually condensing oxygen into water on a cellular level. Now we've talked about bulk water and different types of water in the past. And I'm telling you guys, you know, I like, I like distilled water as a base, but there's always something energetically you need to do to your water to make sure that the cells can absorb it. So this process is actually far more um, beneficial than, than trying to you know, charge it or something yourself because what you're able to do is just encourage the cells to make what they need, which literally they're going to do the best job, right? Like human, man, we cannot do a better job than ourselves. Not to mention you, it's individualized for you as a, as a person. So like literally nothing is going to beat the type of hydration you get from this. If you guys deal with pooling of water in your lower extremities, this is a great technique to use to help to get rid of that. A lot of people believe that when the body is holding onto water, you need to get that water out of your system as quickly as possible. So traditional wisdom will tell you to, you know, take a water pill or, you know, maybe do a sauna or something. You got to off gas all of that water. What the body is actually telling you is that it needs hydration, okay? Now there's a difference between needing water and needing hydration. But once again, as I told you, through this process of dry fasting, the body gets perfect hydration. So if you're dealing with water retention wherever in your body, dry fasting is your tool. If you're dealing with any disease that is associated with inflammation, dry fasting is the tool for you. We got to understand how to do it properly. And I have videos talking about how to properly dry fast. We have challenges around dry fasting. As a matter of fact, if you guys join AHA communities, I have a free guide um, where I teach you how to do a two day dry fast safely and I walk you through all the steps and we've got plenty of resources. So I'll put that in the uh, comment section for you guys. You can join, get that guide. And then if you want to do some dabble in some dry fasting, you do it safely. So let's talk about hormone regulation as it relates to dry fasting. When you dry fast, there is a hormone called vasopressin that actually increases, so it rises. And this is an anti-diuretic hormone which will help to reduce the urination output as well as helping the body to retain and redistribute water in the system. So once again, the body becomes very efficient. It's gonna recycle water from uh, metabolic waste, respiration, and digestion during this process. Even the water vapor from the lungs is minimized as the breathing rate slows down. So when, when we talk about the body becoming more efficient, it's, it's at a level that you wouldn't even really conceive. As a matter of fact, with the, the knowledge that we have about the human body, fasting, and all these different methods, we probably only understand maybe like 10%. If that, like it's so mind blowing what the body is capable of, but even still, it's so outside of the realm of our current scientific knowledge that I typically try to encourage people to fast just to see what you're going to experience. Like be an open book and just, just be honest with yourself and, and, and write things down, document because you really have no idea what you potentially could experience. And don't just look at the physical things, right? We're talking a lot about the physical things, the science, the hormones, the chemicals. Look at the mental aspect. Look at the spiritual implications. Look at the energetic implications, right? You can learn so much when you fast. So all the, the benefits you're getting from dry fasting, it culminates to cellular repair. Cellular repair is going to increase your capacity for hydration. Remember, this entire time we've been talking about the importance and the benefits of hydration. But what we haven't touched on is how as your body starts to degrade over time, your capacity for storage actually diminishes as well. We talk about inflammation rejecting water from the cells, right? Because it becomes toxic, it's inflamed, nothing in, nothing out. But what if you have a normal functioning cell that is low functioning because it's not exactly where it's at a place where it's going to be mutated, but it also isn't optimal. What's its capacity for energy output, for hydration, for hormonal signaling and things of that nature? Like what's the capacity of the cell to do its job? 
What we find with dry fasting is that it not only helps to repair damaged cells and, and things that are completely like erratic, but it also helps to upregulate the ones that are quote unquote normal functioning. So now what you actually see is you will get better performance out of your body holistically compared to when you thought you were healthy or compared to what, what you felt was like normal. You will get more performance. So if you're an athlete, you're going to get, you know, faster times. You're going to be able to lift more. If you're um, more like an intellectual person, you're going to remember things more clearly. Your total recall is going to improve. If you're more spiritually inclined, you're going to have a better, more vibrant, connected to your creator. If you're, if you observe nature or if you observe children, you're, you're going to have different experiences in your regular life. You're going to have a greater appreciation for your spouse, for your children. I'm telling you guys from personal experience, like the appreciation I have for the people around me, for nature, for animals, it all was just completely different. And in a world and a time when we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of war, there's a lot of things going on right now that can really take away from um, the experience of being here on this earth. Like we have an opportunity to shift that perspective. That all happens internally. So I want you guys to think about these things. If you've never done dry fasting, maybe it's time to check it out. We've got plenty of resources available. I'll link all those resources in the description box as well as the comment section. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts about dry fasting. If you've already done some dry fasting, leave your comments below. There may be somebody who's on the fence about dry fasting and your comment may be what pushes them over saying, you know what, I should try that. Or that person had a really good experience or they experience something I want to experience, let me go ahead and, and give this a go. It literally could change your life forever. You could impact those friends and family members around you. Remember, in order to see change in the world, we have to become that change we want to see. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.